Most pressure sensors work by detecting the forces that result when a pressure is applied to a surface. This slide shows the variations in uh, pressure sensors for measuring uh, differential pressure, where we have one pressure on one side and one pressure on the other side, moving this little diaphragm in here between the arrows, and absolute pressure, where we're interested only in the actual pressure of the atmosphere. And we do that much the same way as we have the differential pressure sensor, except we make sure we put a vacuum on the other side of this diaphragm. If we want to measure the gauge pressure, that's the difference between a pressure and normal atmospheric pressure. Once again, we take the same sort of configuration and we just make sure that we open the one side of the differential sensor to atmospheric pressure. This slide from Anderson Hauser on pressure measurement shows a capacitive sensor where when the diaphragm deforms, these two conductive layers get closer to each other. The result is the capacitance changes and you can use some electronic circuitry to detect that capacitance change. Another way to go is with something very similar to the uh, load cells we've been looking at. If we take resistance strain gauges and put them onto a large metal diaphragm and apply a pressure on one side or the other, that diaphragm is going to bend and deform in the same way as our load cell bent and deformed. We can put them into a Wheatstone bridge and with a uh, input voltage we're going to get output voltage here based on the relative changes in those resistances and we can detect the pressure. Most of these with the large metal diaphragm are pretty much obsolete and what you're much more likely to see is the same kind of system with a silicon diaphragm. Much smaller a silicon crystal with a piezo-resistive element built right into the, into the crystal and wired into a circuit which provides the Wheatstone bridge capability. Those are the types of sensors that we'll be looking at in the lab. Here's a practical example of a uh, Kistler pressure transducer using piezo-resistive technology, this kind of technology and the characteristics of that transducer. Two ports for differential pressure detection and these transducers are typically pretty fast. This one has a uh, resonant frequency of 2 kilohertz. So we can detect fairly rapid changes in pressure. If we'd like to spend a little bit less money we can wind up with uh, packages that look more like this, plastic packages, for around $15, providing pressure sensing from two differential ports or from a single absolute port in those two cases. And this is what these uh, freescale sensors look like in cross-section. They've got the silicone diaphragm, the leads coming out of the outside of the package, and a pressure port that allows the pressure in to act on the, uh, on the silicon die. Now it's covered up here with a uh, gel to protect the dye from the air that's out here. And this one shows a stainless steel cap uh, to again provide some more protection. Sometimes you need to provide even more isolation for the pressure transducer to protect it from uh, aggressive fluids in the measurement environment. For instance, inside a chemical process. One of the ways that's done is to put a flexible diaphragm in right here at the bottom, a cavity behind that filled with oil, and then have that oil make actual contact with the pressure transducer. This slows down the response by adding this large mass of oil, but it does get rid of the problem of corrosive fluids acting on, directly on your pressure transducer. If piezo-resistive transducers aren't fast enough for you, then you can go to a fully piezoelectric pressure transducer. The basic idea is if you take a quartz crystal and cause it to be deformed by a small amount, then you'll change the crystal structure and change the state of charge. By detecting this really small change in the state of charge, then you can uh, develop a measure of 
how large the force is that's being exerted on the uh, piezo uh, the piezoelectric element by the pressure. This can be difficult. You need some uh, very sensitive charge amplifiers. However, these piezoelectric pressure transducers will give you a much faster response time. And here's another example, again from Kistler, of piezoelectric pressure sensors. This is a, a small element that's maybe five millimeters across. And as a result, you can put this into, say, an engine cylinder or any number of places. And you can measure at natural frequencies over 215 kilohertz. So very fast changes, suitable for making transient pressure measurements inside diesel engines, in the middle of blast waves or explosions. So following through the range, pretty much all the practical pressure transducers you're going to run into in most of your measurements will have these characteristics, a diaphragm that's deformed by applied pressure. That diaphragm will probably be a silicon crystal. It may be in a relatively inexpensive package with relatively rudimentary protection. Or it may be in a much more sophisticated and more expensive package with better protection systems that slow down the response. And if you want really fast response, you're going to have to go to a piezoelectric transducer. Expensive, difficult to use, but very, very fast.